So yeah, there's a great quote um, talking about, uh, well, first of all, man, I would love to, like if there's a sequel or like a spinoff, or maybe, <laughs> or maybe, I'll, maybe I'll do fan fiction on this. Um, I love the meeting of the child gods. Right in New York, I, I can't remember her name. Sunita. Right. So Sunita was also, you know, in a similar condition as Kalki, as far as like, you know, the guru, you know, seen as like the as a god, and you know, not that the Buddha is referenced here, but like a or like the uh, you know, like a young Dalai Lama or young Buddha mm -hmm. or, but you know, that kind of thing. And she realizes also like how much of a, of a scam it really was for her to be that. That was just so cool, like. For him to be able to talk to someone else like that and also in a different in a removed society in a different country in a different place and obviously much older but you know kalki talks about or maybe it's in one of his, his monologues is quote angry at the world for believing it angry at the world for believing in him believing in his powers right and this idea of quote you can't trick someone who doesn't want to be tricked right people who I'm so this idea of cognitive dissonance, right? Or, or people who just cannot be, be told something different. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I voted for that guy, not vote, not, not naming any names. He was not what I thought he would be, but I'm going to stick with it because if I were to deny him, I'm denying my, you know, that kind of thing. I wonder how that came into play in writing this book, this idea of, you know, a sucker's born every minute <laughs> or, you know, this idea of people just falling for things that can't possibly be true or more so willing themselves to believe they're true, whether it's religious or not. Well, I think, you know, I think we are, are living through a weird time right now yeah. where, you know, my first experience with the U.S. election system was uh when bush jr won oh, yeah, yeah, yeah uh yeah. you know at, where you know it was it was essentially a stolen election and i was like mm. oh my god if that can happen in the u.s like then what hope would you, hope do we have i mean this is supposed to be the most stable country in the world uh. and yet it can happen here and it was it was a moment where i was like okay everything will leave is is false everything is is not true hmm. um and so I, I i became very cynical after that um after the bush gore election and then watching it happen again watching the exact same thing happen again was unbelievable right. it was unbelievable i i didn't know what to do i didn't know what to think anymore um and I think, you know, that that was a large part of of mm -hmm. the book as well. Mm -hmm. This this idea of, of of charlatans of us wanting to believe something so badly that we let go of mm -hmm. our critical thinking, our our um, our logic, our <laughs> um, our values, everything, mm -hmm. because we need we need something to be true so badly that we are going to forego everything else. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I just, I love that idea. Like, I and mean, I think we've all experienced it, not, not in this big way, but just like this idea of I'm angry at that person for believing it. Yes. I may be guilty in, you know, convincing them of something that's not true. It's a little white lie, whatever, but it's just like, there's also that there's that human thing. Like, how are you believing this? You mm -hmm. know, like an anger or almost like a, just being so confused. Guilt is obviously a very human emotion, and um, you know Kalki feels feels that throughout. You know, a lot of time in New York City, um, just about he's he's his father's son, and while they don't have a good relationship, and his father has betrayed him in many many ways, he's also like you know this idea of I need this fealty to my father, um, almost like a like a Stockholm syndrome, right? And, you know, going against all beliefs, right? And also, of course, the guilt for, like, what mm -hmm. have I done to those people who believe? Like, what about the right. letdown? Um, you know, the themes of class and difference. I think we talked about that a little bit with, um, with Kalki, even versus, like, his cousin. And um, the, remind me, is, was it M, right? So M is the girlfriend of his cousin, 
Lakshman, mm-hmm. who he meets up with in New York. And she talks about, and she didn't necessarily have that close connection to her country, to her family's country, but she talked about being a, a Dalit, right? That like the untouchables mm-hmm. as they say. And, you know, and, and Kalki is just kind of like, whoa, right? It's kind of shocking to him. You do such a good job with, I guess, like fluid sexuality in the book where it's just like, it's, it's not something that, I mean, I'm sure this would be a point we'd love to get to in our societies, right? Where it's like, yeah, and, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. um, you have the, the character of Han, who's, what is it, pansexual, is that the term? Mm-hmm. Right? And polyamorous. Polyamorous, that's right. And, you know, it's just yeah. kind of like, um, it's just, it's not a plot point necessarily. It's like just part of, part of their lives. Um, but yeah, and of course, again, going back to the parents, there's this like love and sacrifice, which definitely Kalki's mother does. But this idea of like, you need to be loyal to your father. But what if your father's a charlatan? You need to be loyal to your father. Man, you nailed it with that last line of the book. And I'm not going to say it any other way. <laughs> not, you know, one of those, one of those sentences, you read it on, on its own. You're like, eh, it's a, it's a good sentence. But just mm-hmm. in the context, just that cool way that there's a sort of payback for the father. And then it ends, and I feel like that's a really a twist at the end because he could have. I'm talking about Coggy. He could have reacted mm-hmm. so much differently, right? He could have kept going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just thought you. How did you feel when you wrote that last line? Were you like, "Yep, that stays in there"? I mean, I I wrote so many versions of that last scene. Mm-hmm. It has existed from the very first draft. That oh, okay. that scene has, in some form or another, has mm-hmm. existed in the, from the very first draft because it knew that the novel had to end with a confrontation between Kalki and his father, because that's how it begins. Mm. Um, And I knew that that was the ending. I just didn't know like exactly what what would happen. Um, But yeah, like it's very similar from the very first draft actually, (laughs) even though this is draft 20 and that was draft one. Um, But that last line, was a very late addition because mm, okay. um, I, I wanted I wanted to give Kalki the opportunity for grace sure and which is like you know the thing that every god is supposed to have mm-hmm. um, and I, I I wouldn't have wouldn't have thought about that un, unless like you know it, it's like it's like this thing where like you know, at every moment that you're revising, you you meet this person or you're in this situation where you have a, 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 an encounter that like reveals the next revision mm, to you. I see. Um, and at this moment, when I was trying to figure out the ending, I was living next to a Methodist pastor who was a woman and who was like sort of trying to to navigate the rupture in the Methodist church between the Mm. progressives and the conservatives. And, you know, as a woman pastor, she was sort of, you know, embroiled in the, in, in that debate and had skin in the game. Um, And she talked a lot about grace and I was like, Oh, okay. And, and and this is a, this is a thing that sort of, again, lodged itself. And I was like, okay, Kelki Mm. needs to have a moment of grace where he is able to act, he's able to perform the godly act of grace, which he's never been able to do before. Mm-hmm. Yes, 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 yes. The, um, this is a book where, you know, the, the whole is definitely more than the parts. There's the Guardian, which the, the, the vaunted Guardian did a great review. And a couple of things that were written was, um, S.J. Sindhu's language is simple and clear. Her skills as a storyteller is so subtle that only halfway through the novel did I notice her differing ways with emotional effect. Yep. Blue skin God. So quote, blue skin gods is a rich, beautifully told and moving examination of the allure of superstition and legend, the pains of growing up and the pitfalls of lying to yourself and lying to lying to others and lying to yourself. Uh, quote unquote, Mike drop. Congratulations on a, on a, on a incredible book. I'd love, we'd love to hear a little Thank bit you. if you're up to reading it. Sure. Um, I'm just going to read these two pages um, from the very like late uh, part of the book. 
which I've never read from actually. Okay, so okay. this is the very first time. In between songs, Lakshman smiled and winked at the fans, asked them how they were and told them charming little stories about the band's adventures. The songs were bizarre, irreverence their entire point. One song had two lyrical lines repeated over and over. This, I'm gonna swear right now. Uh, two pigs in a bucket, fuck it. Another song was called Harry Krishna, which made me laugh. And another included the phrase, taking a poop in an abandoned mine. You're with the band, right? The bartender asked. He set a glass of beer in front of me on the house. I took it and held it without drinking. At least it helped me blend in. Somewhere during the third song, I got curious and sipped the beer. It tasted like cool, fizzing liquid bread that had gone bad. I kept sipping. And the more the bubbles numbed my tongue, the easier it was to drink. Guilt tried to sneak in, but I kept drinking. Most of the world believes and has always believed in some sort of divine being or beings whether that's a single omniscient God or many gods in complicated pantheons or localized nature deities. But the number of people who had grown up believing they were divine beings themselves was very few. Later in life, when I told people about my upbringing, they often wondered what it does to a person to believe themselves a God. Sitting in the bar drinking my first beer, I didn't know what I believed. We had talked about it backstage before the show. Lakshman alleged that gods didn't exist, that science is all we have. M said she didn't know, that there's no way to know or, or prove the existence or non-existence of a god or gods, and Han agreed with her. Jason thought it didn't matter whether there is a god or not, because to be good human beings, we should always act like a benevolent God is watching. He told me this is known as Pascal's wager, named after the philosopher and mathematician Blaise Pascal, who believed that the best cost benefit analysis pointed to us living our lives as if a God exists. Because if God exists, then we're in the clear. And if God doesn't exist, we don't lose much by being good people. I didn't know anyone, uh, and I didn't know anymore if I believed in a God or gods, but Hinduism is more than the existence of divine beings. Hindu philosophy is also about karma, reincarnation, dharma, maya, and moksha, all forces within the universe that exist independently of our la large pantheon of gods. Karma the sum total of the good and bad choices we make in life. Reincarnation, the cycle of birth and rebirth, where we live out the rewards and punishments for our karma. Dharma, the, uh, the righteous path. Maya, the illusions of the world that tempt us into veering off our dharma. Moksha, the self-actualization that leads to the final release from our reincarnation cycle. In Hinduism, these concepts are laws of the universe, like gravity or thermodynamics. Some believe the gods created those laws and some believe the laws created the gods. What they agree on is that gods, by nature of being gods, are exempt from many of these laws. They don't reincarnate except when they want to, they can see through the illusionary temptations of the universe. They don't accumulate karma and they always behave righteously. But I wasn't a god and I didn't know what that meant for me and these laws. And now that I knew M, I can no longer ignore caste. As much as I tried, I couldn't account for the positive points of a religion like Hinduism that would condemn an entire set of people because of their spot on an imaginary ladder. For me, everything about religion was connected to Aya and his teachings. And if he had lied about me being a God, maybe he had also lied about the existence of gods in general. And if he'd lied about that,
Maybe he'd also lied about the laws of the universe. What I did trust was the feeling I had deep inside me that said I wished to break free from him. I decided, sitting in the pounding half darkness of the bar with my eardrums jumping, that it was time for me to start trying everything. If you're following along at home, that was page what, 238, 239, I believe. I don't know. <laughs> Man, I love how um, I love how it's it's in the moment um, with Kalki in, you know, in New York City, but then also it goes forward a little bit, like in looking back at those different perspectives, even within that. Um, Pre-COVID, you know, no COVID, let's say COVID is not an issue. Are you going, you get free tickets to go to uh, see the Blue Skin Gods band at, at Madison Square Garden. Are you going? Like, are, you there, are they like a good band, do you think? Absolutely. Okay. Too when I was uh, when I was in my, you know, most of my twenties and early thirties, I, I would totally go to that. Okay. Band. All uh, right. Yeah, yeah. All they're right. they're like mostly good, but they're sometimes kind of bad, and that's what makes them good. Ooh. Do you have? Did you did you have like an analog in your head? Like, are you thinking of them? Are you are they like totally beyond descript beyond comparison? Or are you thinking like they're kind of like? Um. I don't have a specific analogy, but they're kind of like the sort of post-punk bands that I listened mm, to in okay. the early 2000s. Like they're, <laughs> you know, where, where like everyone in the crowd sort of looks the same and is wearing like, you know, skinny jeans and a cardigan. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, some of the songs are really good and some yeah. of the songs are kind of like, ah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. What, uh, <laughs> You, you're very prolific it's so cool you're doing you know working in different genres graphic novels and such what's what's coming next so next is shakti which is a, a fantasy middle grade graphic novel All illustrated right. by nabi h ali um who's an okay. extremely talented illustrator okay. yes. uh, that i'm very excited about um so that's coming out next summer mm. and it's about uh it's about a young a South Asian girl who uh, harnesses the power of the goddesses Durga and Kali to perform magic. Wow. Um, yeah. So it's about witches. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it takes place in New England uh, during Halloween, which is my uh, favorite thing. I, yeah. it's, my, it's my favorite thing. Like wow. Halloween in New England is fantastic. <laughs> um, and then the year after, uh, Tall Water which is a, um, a YA uh, yeah. graphic novel about a, a, a young girl, I guess a teenager, um, who, a young woman who um, gets caught in the 2004 tsunami that hit oh, uh, Sri Lanka. Yes. So it's a, it's a little, it, it's, you know, very different, very real, mm -hmm. you know, very realist, um, mm -hmm. more mature, mm -hmm. but um, trying to, look at uh questions of identity mm. gosh it's been 18 years 2004 wow yeah. oh my god yeah it'll come out on the 20th uh near the 20th anniversary uh, okay okay yeah. so shakti is summer 2022 or summer 2023 2023 okay okay yeah. well, we have we have some things to look forward to for sure um man i had so much fun thanks so much for talking to me yeah today. thank you so much these well, are great questions. I appreciate that. Maybe we'll we'll talk to you and you know when the when the ones come out in the future. So hopefully, please, this is not, yes, this is not goodbye, right? <laughs> I would love to be back. Oh man, what a pleasure! Been such a pleasure today talking to you, and thank you so much. Continue good luck with your writing. Continue great luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to episode 118 with S.J. Sindhu. You can now subscribe to the Chills of Will podcast on Apple. Leave a five star review. You can also ask for it by name using Alexa, find it on Stitcher, Spotify, and on Amazon Music. And I'm definitely minimizing those last two more recently. Spotify and Amazon, they don't need your, your business. Follow me on Instagram where I'm at Chills at Will Podcast or on Twitter where I'm at Chills at Will P01. Sindhu, your, your social media info, I'm sorry. It's at Esther Sindhu. That's pretty, pretty hard to remember. Okay. Okay. And that's S-I-N-D-U. S-J-S-I-N-D-U. Thank you. You can watch this and other episodes on YouTube through the Chills at Will podcast channel. 
please subscribe to both the YouTube and the podcast while you're checking out this episode and please pass it on to a friend. This is a passion project of mine, a DIY operation, and I'd love for your help in promoting what I'm convinced is a unique and spirited look at an often ignored art form. The intro song for the podcast is Wind Down Instrumental, and the other song played on the episode was Hoops Instrumental by Matt Whitehour. Both songs are used through archesaudio.com. Please tune in for episode 119 with Disha Filia. Her debut short story collection, The Secret Lives of Church Ladies, won the 2021 Penn Faulkner Award for Fiction, and it focuses on Black women, sex, and the Black church, and it's now being adapted for television by HBO Max with Tessa Thompson, ex executive producing. Disha is also a Kimbillo, Kimbillo Fiction Fellow and will be the 2022-2023 John and Renee Grisham Writer-in-Residence at the University of Mississippi. That episode will air on April 19th. For now, thanks again for listening, and I hope that these quarantine days bring you texts by writers with mad skills like S.J. Sindhu, whose work, like Blue Skin Gods, gives you chills at will.